channel. Today we're going to be talking about a water coloring problem. This problem is known as beading. If you don't know, beading is when water does not pool together in a puddle and actually just separates into several small droplets. This makes it hard to mix and hard to see what the color really is. To start off this video, I thought I would show you why I'm actually doing it. I recently got a new palette, a paint box as a matter of fact, and I really, really like the paints. It is 48 colors, and six of those are metallic, and the colors are very vibrant and beautiful, and it even comes with this little swatching card that I swatched out, but I would prefer to actually swatch them out on real watercolor paper. It comes with this little drawing pencil that I actually haven't used yet. And the paints come in this little tin palette that I discovered beads much worse than any palette I've ever had. And I believe that this is all tin palettes and not just specifically this brand. Now, the reason I got this was because I was hoping for a more variety of colors than my small little watercolor palette that I'd been using. And I wanted it to be a palette as I have have used tubes and prefer palette. I got this also so I could try out some metallics without going the whole way and totally devoting to them and just getting a full-on metallic pack. This paint box comes with some watercolor paper. I don't know the specific number or the why they're, either it is hot press or cold press, but, but I did try some out and I really liked the way that the water went on. The paint box also came with some watercolor brushes. It came with three small regular brushes. I believe the box called them hook liner pens. It also came with two larger water brushes. I've never used these and was very excited at the thought of trying them out. They're white bristled so they stain pretty easily but they don't take color. The water comes out really nicely, and I had a lot of fun trying these out. This is the smaller one. I have yet to use it, but I did test it out to see how the water came out, and it came out quite nice actually. It came out a little slower than the other one, and I like that because I can control the water better. This is a ceramic watercolor palette that I'll use sometimes, and I bought it because of the beading problem. It does not bead on this palette and pulls together very nicely, but I almost gave up on palettes. This is my first palette that I've been using, and it also has a beading problem. This Windsor & Newton little travel case is very compact and I've used it quite a lot. As you can see, the palette is very dirty and it comes with 12 colors. I've kind of solved the beading problem on this, but that's just because I've used it so much and I believe it's because the paint is already down. It comes with this little compact brush that I don't actually use very much except for mixing and Really, I only use it when I go out and want to bring my little, my little watercolors. Just to show you that this one actually doesn't bead, I put a little bit of water on there to show you. But it does bead when it is put on a clean surface. It's not beading now because I have a dirty surface under it of watercolors. But as you can see, I put a little bit down on a dry surface, and it beaded. Is that a word? Beaded? I tried on both sides just to show you for real. And used a different color, and as you can see, it, it beads when it does not touch the paint, but pulls together when it actually has paint under it.
Now, my tin palette actually beads slightly worse. Um, that's probably because I haven't used it yet, and maybe it's because it's metal, but I really was very frustrated with this when I first opened it. I was hoping that the new material wouldn't bead and I would have the problem solved. In fact, I didn't really know that this was an actual problem that could be solved, and I was just accepting it. But I watch tutorials and I see artists use palettes that just their, their paints came in, and I wanted to know how they were not getting the problem that I was having. And I found out that it was a solvable problem when I saw a Tips for Watercolor Artists, and it said clean it with toothpaste. So here I've got some toothpaste. This is just a little container I picked up and I've not used it at all. I'm not going to use it for anything else. And it it's a mint strip, Colgate. And I didn't know if this was specifically going to work or if I had to get a different Colgate. I had no idea. Really, all you want to do is rough up the surface of your watercolor palette, and toothbrush is in a toothpaste is an abrasive. First, I'm going to clean off my Windsor and Newton. It's dirty because I was afraid of wasting paint, but it there really isn't that much paint, and these little palettes will last me ages, so I'm not scared of wasting anymore. In the first little section, I'm going to try out just the toothpaste. I will use my finger as a, a what do you say? I'll use my finger to rub it on. Now, this didn't take me too long, or at least the rubbing part didn't, but cleaning it was kind of hard, as the toothpaste would get stuck in the little corners. Here I'm bringing in a toothbrush so I can scratch up the middle surface with the toothpaste and the toothbrush co combined, and I wanted to see if that would get a better result. I hadn't tested the first one yet, but I just wanted to see what would it look like with the toothbrush, which is also a scratching material, and the toothpaste? There's no specific measuring to the toothpaste, I just kind of eyeballed it to make sure that I was getting about the size of this small little section. I wet the toothbrush first because that's just what I do before I brush my teeth, so I thought, well, maybe this does something. Now to test out the results. I'm going to use a pretty dark color for so that you can see clearly. Initiate the giddy giggles as I put down the watercolors and it didn't bead. Next, I tried out the toothbrush and the toothpaste and put in some more giddy giggles because this one worked even better. This is the side that I didn't treat and as you can see, now that it's clean, it's beading up very badly. Not as bad as the tin palette, however, but that's again probably because of a different material. I played around with these a lot just to make sure that it was a 100% and wasn't just a temporary effect, and I was really happy with the toothbrush and toothpaste result, as it seems to be the least amount. However, this led to the question, was it the toothbrush or the toothpaste that was giving me the result I wanted? 
So I went back and just took the toothbrush to it. Sorry for the shaking camera moving around. Again, I'm using a darker color, but I wet the surface first this time. When I first put this down, I was pretty excited, I guess, to show that the toothbrush did do something. But it was still beating, and I would say that both of them put together did the best job. I mixed another color in there just to make sure that I was getting it right, just to see how mixing colors would be. And I also mixed colors in the one that I treated with both of them, just to make sure that it was, again, not a temporary effect, and I could get the nice pooling watercolors even after a little bit of time had passed. And I tried this in the toothbrush one again, and it beads worse than the toothbrush alone. So if you want to try this, I would say use both, but if you don't want to use toothpaste, I would use just your toothbrush and see how that works. But I would only do this on plastic, as I again tried this on my tin, and you'll see the results here in a minute. Alright, now for my tin palette. I'm going to try the same techniques on this as I did on my plastic. Again, these are different materials, so I didn't know what to expect. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the toothpaste down and use it alone on one section and use it with the toothbrush on another, and then just use the toothbrush alone in the next section. It took forever for me to get the minty smell and feeling off my finger. So, it doesn't pull as bad as it did before. But if you look closely near the edges, you can see it beating up a little bit. But again, not as bad as it was before. Now for the toothbrush and toothpaste. Move the palette around so I could get a better angle and went away. Cleaning off this palette was so much easier, as it didn't have the little corners and it was a lot smoother. Here are the results for the watercolor and toothbrush together, and I think this again did better than just the toothpaste alone. Now for just the toothbrush alone. I went and cleaned it because it was starting to look a little nasty and I didn't want to dirty my surface. While I do add more color so you can definitely see it, as you can hopefully see, it beaded. And I put a little more paint on the other side just to compare and it had really no difference from the one with that I didn't treat. I 
played around with this for a little bit because I loved the feeling that it wasn't beating. And then I just treated all of them with the treatment that seemed to work best. I did the other side of my tin palette as well. I don't think I'll ever use that side, but I did treat it just in case. I cleaned off my brush and put the cap back on as I finished up my watercolors. The feeling of success was unbelievably satisfying, and I hope I can feel a lot of it soon because, well, it's kind of addicting. And if you want to know more about my new watercolor palette, I'm planning on doing a video um, using my new paints and a full painting. And I really enjoyed doing this and trying to figure out what was wrong. And if you were like me and didn't know that this was a problem, I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll come back next Tuesday and watch my next video. Bye!